Why do you suck at scootering? I'm not talking about in comparison to me. I'm not really talking about in comparison to anybody. I've just noticed that I got a lot of comments on a lot of my YouTube videos, shorts, TikToks, etc., of people telling me, oh, I've been scootering for 35 years and I can't even bunny hop yet. Things of that sort where people will be telling me that they've been scootering for a certain amount of time and they can or can't do some tricks that um, I'm teaching. It's a little bit of a weird way of looking at it. And then uh, I recently saw this Roman De La Penta video where he covers why you suck at scootering. I thought it was a great video. I actually felt like I had a lot to add to this video. I'd like to go into more detail on some of the stuff that he was talking about in that video, as well as like adding a lot of my own opinions. I've been teaching scootering for quite a long time now. I've noticed a lot of things. And I've also done a lot of research into how people learn. And I've tried to implement it into my videos as well as implement it in my in my teaching, in my private lessons. So I get a lot of comments about this. For starters, it's not complicated. It really, really comes down to just practice. I think that this video could be two seconds long and it's like, why do you suck at scootering? Because you haven't practiced enough. But I think it's also a really negative way of looking at it. You don't suck at scootering. If you're starting out at a skill that you've never ever tried before, you haven't been practicing for very long, then it's almost Almost really unfair to say you suck at it because you don't even know it yet and uh, I really don't think anybody sucks at scootering I think of it as like an input output sort of thing where it's if you put a lot of time in you get a lot of results out and there's other things that go into that as well um, and that's what I'm gonna go into here the most simplified version of this video is just Practice, guys. If you're struggling to do a trick, practice that trick. Don't type comments about it. If you want to type a comment about it, tell me what you're struggling with and maybe I'll make a video about it. If you're not practicing, then um, you're really not progressing. What I'm going to go into is things that can help your practice and how we learn. This is how you get better at scootering and how to not suck at scootering anymore. Speaking of practice, there's a couple different ways you can practice. What I explained in one of my previous videos really covers the best way to practice where it's a lot of dedicated practice. If you're working on a tail whip, for example, and you're really, really struggling to do a tail whip, you can't just practice a tail whip because you don't know how to do it yet. So I like to break down the trick into its core parts, like the motion and the hop and the ramp and the air and getting my feet on and balancing it and all the little parts that go into it. I like to practice one part of each trick at a time. I break it down, I master each part of the trick, and then I put it all together at the end. This is how I teach my scootering. This is how I learn tricks myself. There's so many tricks that I think are really awkward or weird, and I'll just do what makes them up. Like whip bar whip, I did whip bar and bar whip and practice them back to back. And then I would do a whip bar and throw the whip, but not land it on purpose just to feel it out. And then um, I would put it all together. Things like that make learning so, so much easier and really speed up the learning process. I think even more important than worrying about the quality of your riding is having fun. I think this sounds really cheesy a lot of the times because everybody's like, oh, I wanna be good, I wanna do a kickless, I wanna do a backflip. But that is way, way less important. If you hate scootering because it just feels like work, like it feels like you're always like trying to progress and you can't progress, then step it down a notch. Just go there and ride with your friends. like. I teach because a lot of people want to progress and I like progression and I enjoy progression and that's fun for me, but it's really just not that fun for a lot of people. And a lot of people would rather go cruise around the skate park with their friends than be worried about being the best rider at the skate park or the best rider in the country or the best rider in the world. So have fun. And on top of that, I think that having fun scootering makes you a better rider. I want to go to the skate park four or five days a week to ride because it's fun for me. If that wasn't fun for me, I would struggle to go one day a week or two days a week. So how do you think you're going to be able to practice, dedicated practice, three days a week if it's just not fun? You're going to have a hard time convincing yourself to even go to the skate park. So number one, have fun even when you're practicing. Make it fun, practice with your friends, do whatever you can to just make practice fun and you will just automatically get better. And don't be worried about practicing 24 seven. Being in it for the long haul will pretty much make you better than everyone else. It's, it's input versus output and having fun is a huge part of that. So have fun, dedicated practice. And I would say 
uh, really underrated thing is a variety of practice, right? Don't just practice tricks. Practice techniques, practice pumping, practice airing, practice balancing. Do a variety of things. Like a lot of my campers at Woodward, when I was teaching at Woodward, they would always be like, oh, no, 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 I can't do that trick. That's a street trick. And I ride park only. It's a scooter trick and you ride a scooter, don't you? And they'll be like, no, no, no. And it's like, they're very quick to write off a lot of tricks. So they'll only practice riding like a giant resi fly box and they'll have no balance skills that come from street and they'll have no outside skills that help. I've realized that being a well-rounded rider doesn't just make you a well-rounded rider, but actually improves your scootering all around. There's this concept called skill plasticity, and it basically means the more skills you know, the easier it is to learn a new skill. And I think about that within scootering. Being a well-rounded rider doesn't just make you a well-rounded rider, it makes you a better rider overall because ideas in riding street might transfer to ideas in park. I think these skills that you learn doing street trick can totally transfer into skills that you use doing park tricks or maybe just spending more time in different areas of the skate park on your scooter will give you lots of tools to learn new tricks. So a variety of practice. And on top of that, even more so, when you learn a trick like a tail whip or a bar spin or a backflip, try it on as many different ramps as you can and try to dial it in on every single one of those ramps. Once you can do one trick across different ramps, your brain will learn the exact things that make that trick work. You don't even need to consciously know what makes the trick work. You could say magic, but as long as you can dial it in on every single one of those ramps, you will like intuitively know in your in your soul how this trick works. You'll be able to do it much, much, much better. We have system one and system two in our brains. And basically that means system two is like trying to learn something. When you're trying to do the motion and trying to figure it out and you're in the air and you're focusing really hard. And system one is when you dial a trick in. If you are learning a new trick and you try it in the air for the first time, by the time you've even thought about how to do the trick, you've already hit the ground. So I always try to dial the trick in as much as I can before I even leave the ramp. Like I'll, I'll do motions in my bedroom. I will practice hitting the ramp. I'll do some run-ups so that I can at least get started and try to put some of this stuff in my, my system one brain, get it really dialed in, make it all muscle memory so I don't even need to think about it when I'm in the air. And when you practice the fundamentals, the your tail whips, your 360s, all this stuff, and you really, really master it, all of those become system one. And when you're doing triple whips and bri flips and butter cups, they become so much easier. Nowadays, I'm doing tricks that I didn't even know were possible as warm-up tricks like whip buttercups and you know flares and stuff stuff that i never thought i could ever be capable of doing because as you get better things feel more attainable nobody just wakes up and does a backflip one day by the time you're capable of doing a backflip it kind of makes sense to do a backflip you'll go oh you know what i think that is a trick that i can do you know really dialing these things in and progressing slowly are such good habits to get into and that's what makes like these these incredible riders like ryan williams and everybody at and near that level in reality there's kind of these stages that everybody goes through where like right after you get a tail whip and you're starting to get some of the other fundamentals you're going to start learning like five tricks a day. I see it all the time. You'll start learning like so much, so, so quick. And you'll have like a really, really good summer where you're just learning new tricks every day. And then all of a sudden, you stop learning new tricks. And you're like, oh man, oh man, I must suck at scootering. Like I'm not learning any tricks anymore. I'm basically like washed up, all that kind of stuff. This is part of the cycle of scootering. This happens to me pretty much every year, every other year where I'll learn a lot of tricks really, really fast. And then I kind of hit a point where all the tricks that I'm learning are so, so hard that I need to go and dial in every single trick that I learned from like the progression before I can get to the next step. I remember when I was starting out, it was like around the time that I learned double whips. Double whips weren't super hard to learn, but triple whips were extremely hard to learn. It took me forever to learn triple whips. So like I learned all these tricks in a year and then it took me like six months to dial in everything that I was working on, everything that I knew. And once I had like dub whips almost flat, then 
Trip Whip started to work. So I tell people to just focus on the fundamentals and then dial them in. Eventually, once you have 360s so dialed in that you can't dial them in anymore, then truck drivers and 360 whips suddenly look possible. It goes from being this trick that's like really scary and really big to being something that's like, oh wait, I think I can do that. And that's when you start getting like close and you go through the progression cycle again and you kind of stagnate and you go through the progression cycle again. And it's all about finding like a line between pushing your boundaries and practicing what you already know. But pushing your boundaries is extremely important. Like one of the most important things you could do. Obviously, don't go out there and hurt yourself just for the sake of progression. That's insane. But you want to always be pushing your boundaries. I see a lot of people who get to like the bry and bry whip stage of their riding. And they kind of just do that like a lot. They don't really progress anymore because... Once you dial something in, you can only get so good at that thing. If I just spent the last 10 years doing tail whips, I wouldn't know like buttercups because I was just doing tail whips. I'd be really good at tail whips. But there's kind of like a, a point when you've practiced something so much that it's probably time to move on. So there's this cycle of stagnating and growth, but you don't want to stagnate overall where it's like you've stagnated for seven years and if you have stagnated for seven years take some of the tips that i've provided previously in this video a lot of those things will help push you out of your comfort zone help get the kind of practice that shows progression and i will say that back to the original saying like why you suck at scootering is that you don't suck at scootering honestly a lot of the times you're looking at these pros you're seeing the final product Personally, I've been riding for over 10 years, and every trick you've seen me do, I've tried hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times before you ever saw me do it. On Instagram, for the most part, we only post our lands in maybe like three attempts. Every trick I've done, I've tried hundreds and hundreds of times over a very, very, very long time, and you guys are just seeing the results of that. And I still have a super long way to go. I have so much to learn. I have lists and lists of all the tricks that I would like to learn. I still feel like I have such a long way to go sometimes. People will sometimes tell me, oh, dude, you're so good. How'd you get so good? I'm like, there's no secret. There is, I wish I could tell you, oh, you got to ride at this exact time of day when the temperature is this and the wind is blowing exactly like this and you know take this supplement and then you'll be really good at riding i really wish that was the answer because it would make teaching so much easier but instead it's it's a lot of practice like 99.9 percent .9 practice and practicing efficiently and just like knowing what you need to do to kind of get to the next stage but there's really no secret. It's a lot of practice. And um, you guys you guys don't suck at scootering. I promise. You, you don't. There's always going to be somebody better. Don't worry about it. Go out today, if you can. Scooter. Have fun. Listen to some music. Hang out with your friends. And uh, try to learn some new tricks. I know this was a really long video. And even kind of a little different than what I'm used to doing. Maybe a little bit technical. I hope it wasn't too much for you guys. But I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is the stuff that I love talking about. So if you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. I'll be making more of these types of videos as well as all the other types of videos that I've been making, including plenty of tutorials to help you guys progress. Make sure to like, subscribe, share. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.